it kind of breaks down barriers. Yeah. It's like, you know, I don't know how to talk to this person or, you know, relate to this person. Well, suddenly you have like this context. You can right. have this, this great context and an interaction with people. You can even compete with them or, or be right. on their team. And there's just some really neat stuff to games. Hey everyone, this is Yvette Hampton. Welcome back to the Schoolhouse Rocks podcast. I am back with Nathan King. We're talking about memorization this week. And if you missed Monday's episode and Wednesday's episode, go back and listen to those because this is a fascinating conversation about the power of memorization. So we are going to continue talking about that. But before we do, I want to say thank you to our sponsor again, CTC Math. If you guys are looking for a great online math program, go to CTC Math dot com try them out for free ctcmath.com are you a math guy nathan i like math because you're kind of a nerd you said I'm totally a nerd you like math i, I kind of do yeah all right well. i'm that guy Sorry. so would you prefer to teach it to your kids or have someone else teach it uh, for you I, I don't have time and so i would right. probably i'd probably have someone else okay. do it yeah um emotionally i would love to teach my kids oh wow okay yeah yeah math though yeah Oh yeah. Okay. Well, oh, I, when I'm asked, when dad well, gets asked, yeah, this is a good you're day. like, yes, I get to, yeah. Nice. Okay. Well, maybe if you love math, but you don't have time <laughs> to teach math, yeah, go to ctcmath.com <laughs> and try them out. Um, Nathan. Okay. We talked at the end of yesterday's episode, we were talking about just some fun ways to teach memorization to our kids. And we talked about motions. We talked about setting up the environment for them. We talked about songs. Um, Talk really quickly about games, because I know this is something that you're like, games is a great way to teach. And we love games in our family. Um, so how do you combine games and memorization? Absolutely. Well, I mean, and when it comes to memorization, there, there's the kind of the three phases that we've talked about that, that Bible Quest does and, and, and anyone doing the classical model kind of does, which is like that memorization, kind of that dialectic or, or logic phase where you kind of put stuff together in your conversation, yeah. you know, having conversation about it. And then you have that rhetoric. Um, the thing about that memorization or grammar phase is that it lends itself so well to games. And I love games. You I am, do. I'm a game we guy. play games with your family. Yes, you we guys do. are we have, big gaming fans. <laughs> we well, love oh, it. so when I was saying games earlier, I didn't mean like board games. Oh, yeah. I meant like video games. Oh, no, you can't. That's what I was talking about. Oh, no, no. Because no, we, we like, had a conversation on the side. Yeah, and yeah. then you, you, you were like, yeah, yeah, anyway. Oh, no. I mean, I didn't mean, but I love board games. Yeah, I guess you could use video games, but you'd have to like design them to do it. And, and then you could, I suppose, you know, there's ways of no, doing no, that. Yeah, no, I'm talking about. <laughs> okay, we're getting way into the weeds here. <laughs> it was part of our conversation, and, and you were talking about understanding the language of whatever people were talking oh, about. Right, right, right. And I said, if someone started talking about video games, Oh yeah. I would have no idea what they were talking about. Yeah, exactly. Did I say video games? You did say I... video games. Oh, okay. And I understood what you were saying at that time. Oh, gotcha. Okay. I just related it wrongly. So gotcha. you okay. guys just saw that in real time. There you go. Right. <laughs> Cause you were probably like, what? You don't like games? Shoot. We no, play no, games no. all no, the you time said with your video family. Games. Okay, good. No. Good, good, good. Yeah. No, I knew you like games. I did. I, but, yeah. but I love, I love games. And, and and part of that is just because of the social element and and it, it kind of breaks down barriers. Yeah. It's like, you know, I don't know how to talk to this person or, you know, relate to this person. Well, suddenly you have like this context. You right. can have this this great context and an interaction with people. You can even compete with them or or be right. on their team. And there's just some really neat stuff to games. But it's also a really great context for memorization. Here's how. Tell me. Yeah. So like, basically, if you have memorized repertoire, if you have, let's say that you're learning, you know, John 3, 16. Mm -hmm. Okay. Just for example, all right. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever should believe in him should not perish, but have eternal life. I'm not sure exactly what version that was, yeah. <laughs> but I have that. So, but I'm going to teach that. I'm going to, I'm going to learn that. Right. So um, if, if I'm doing that, what I can do is I can say like connect four. I can take connect four and I can have my two kids, you know, one on either side or maybe even two teams of kids, whatever, black side, red side. Okay, say John 3, 16. Oh, and they say, forgot to love the world. You know, and they do the whole thing. I say, great, put in your black thing. Mm -hmm. All right, black, you know, piece to connect four. So I put it in. Yeah. Red side, you say it. I'm sorry, it wasn't perfect. You missed two words in there. I'm sorry, you don't get to play one, right? <laughs> I mean, that, that's like a little bit harsh. Sure. Um, but but you see how you could do that. Yeah. You can basically add in the ability to to just kind of regurgitate your memorized repertoire that yeah. you're learning to any game. Tag, you're doing freeze tag. Before you get free, you have to say John three sixteen. Wow. Right? Like, yeah. and, and that's a simple example, mm -hmm. but you can literally superimpose any memorized, you know, list or whatever over a game. Yeah. Right. And, and I'm not just talking about like, you know, trivia games, sure. I mean, any game, yeah. you can kind of superimpose that over it. And most, it, maybe there's a few games that wouldn't work for that, mm -hmm. but the vast majority sure. will, yeah. you know, memorization. I'm thinking even like Candyland, oh, you know, absolutely. for little kids, if they're memorizing yeah. something simple, you know, you say the thing that you're supposed to memorize, you get to pull a card and move your piece, 
you know, I mean, yeah, that's fun. Absolutely. I never have thought about doing it that way. Well, and Melissa, my wife, she even got uh, actually Candyland specifically. She yeah. went to um, like a Goodwill store or something mm -hmm. and picked it up for like a dollar. And then she actually wrote the stuff that she wanted the kids to recite on the cards. Oh, and so wow. they had to pick it up and they had to say it before they could use the, you know, pink square yeah. or the two blue squares or whatever they're doing. Right. You know, and so, yeah, you, you can do that with any game. Oh, that's cool. And so that's, and, and what's really neat about that now with the older kids, it's a little bit different, but with the younger kids, yeah. if you do a new game, you're like, now we're doing a new game. Yeah. They don't even like think about the fact that they're still saying John 316. Right. Like they don't think about it. Like it's a totally new experience. <laughs> it's right. Like, you know, so anytime you change up what you're doing, whether it's mm -hmm. a game or a different activity mm -hmm. or whatever, they see it as a whole new activity, yeah. even though you're just regurgitating the same information that you're trying to build into them through frequency and duration and yeah. intensity. Wow. Wow. Well. Okay. So you just mentioned older kids and I want to jump into that for yeah, a minute yeah. because I want to talk about teaching older kids to memorize because we talked a lot about how younger kids, you know, they're in that foundations phase. Right. They understand uh, or not understand. They are able to absorb the things that we're pouring into their brains. Absolutely. Um, and as we get older and, and I don't know, this is, this is just Yvette logic. I think, as we get older, it gets harder to memorize because we have so many things filling that bucket of our brain. Sure. Is, yeah. is that true? Do you know? I, I don't know if that's it. There, We're going into I neurological no, questions to I have which no I have no answer. to back that. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> but, but that's just my thing. Anyway, yeah. talk about teaching older kids to memorize, especially if they have not been taught to memorize right. as young children. Well, and I think, I think there's actually even another hurdle as well as that. I mean, you're right. I mean, it does get harder as you get older in some sense. Mm -hmm. We're always going to memorize. Okay. You're always going to memorize it. There, there's, there's, sure. this is how we learn. Yeah, I mean, yeah, there's yeah. a level where you have to memorize stuff. Um, um, and, and we just do, mm -hmm. uh, even if we're not terribly good at it, we still memorize things. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, um, we, we memorize roads when we move oh, yeah. to a new town and figure, you know, memorize the laws of the road and things like that. So, so absolutely. I mean, if we're you're a always teenager like, and you see someone of the opposite gender and you're kind of like, mm, I think they're pretty nice. I bet you know their name pretty right. quick. You know what I mean? You memorize stuff, <laughs> right? right? I mean, like we all do, if we want to, we memorize right. things. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I, I think there, there is kind of a cultural idea though, too, that like memorizations for little kids. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And, and so I think that can actually also be an additional hurdle. So you have mm -hmm. like kind of that psychosomatic like challenge, right? Yeah. Where your brain is not as, as absorbent as it once was, right. you know, even if you're 16, it's not as absorbent as when you're six. Right. right. Um, but then you also have kind of this other challenge of like, that's for little kids. Right. right. Yeah. And so, and so, so how do you, how do you navigate that as, as a, as a parent? Right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and so I have some solutions basically kind of on that motivational side. Okay. Um, that um, are, are helpful, but I'm also going to show you one very, very powerful solution on the how do you memorize side that okay. older kids I think can latch onto really, really well. Um, so on the on the motivational side, you know, making getting past that cultural problem, mm -hmm. um, if you're able to bring your older student, you know, especially like those preteens and mm -hmm. kind of the, the the middle schoolers, if you can say, look, you're not doing this, I need you to help me to help your younger brother or sister to learn this, mm -hmm. right? If you if they're helping you to teach it. That's a totally different thing. Right. And as a, as a side note, I would love to see churches mm -hmm. actually take time to memorize scripture in the worship service. Oh yeah. Right. Because, and show like moms and dads and, mm -hmm. and, and, and how to, how to do this thing. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, because suddenly something they may not be like very comfortable doing, you know, kind of on their own, you know, for their own learning yeah. suddenly is perfectly okay. If they're doing it for the five-year-old, right. Oh, I'm doing it for the kids. Right. Yeah. That yeah. context shifts anybody. It doesn't matter if they're, you know, 12 year old, 16 year old, 60 year old. Yeah. It, it, it changes your context sure. if you're doing it for the kids. Right. So I love that element. Mm -hmm. So I kind of try to recruit people to help me. Yeah. But the reality is they're getting the repetition. Yeah. Right. They're getting the frequency they're getting the duration, whatever. And so they're learning it, even if they aren't, they aren't, or they're taking it in, even right. if they're not realizing that's what's going on. Right. 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 So that's kind of a motive on a motivational side. Um, you, but you can challenge students to kind of go to the next level. Mm -hmm. um, you can do that through either motivational techniques, like saying, oh, you, you know, you memorize this and you get a prize, you know, mm -hmm. you get to go out with your friends to a pizza party or, you know, whatever yeah. you're going to do. I mean, that does that, that can, you know, get some sure. kids motivated. Um, but you can also say, look, we're not going to memorize this, this simple stuff. Yes. You memorize the simple stuff as well, mm -hmm. but I want you to memorize this more complex idea as mm -hmm. well. Like go the other direction with it. Right? right. Like actually, no, no, no. The easy stuff. That's not what you're doing. Mm -hmm. You're doing that plus this over here. And mm -hmm. I expect this harder level mm -hmm. kind of thing in, in Bible quest. We have in our chronological kind of our win stuff, we have a, a time note. And for little kids, I don't, I don't have to memorize it. I, I, I've never had a little kid memorize it. It's just too, it's too technical. It's too complex. An older kid, if they could like spout back to you when the patriarchal period was, right. that's, 
kind of awesome. You know what I mean? Like yeah. that, then that, that's kind of amazing. And that's, that is next level that they're able to now mm-hmm. engage in a higher level of conversation. Right. So I'm going to have them memorize something that's of a higher, you know, right. value and, and, and more complexity. Um, but the big, big guns thing that you can do from a practical standpoint is you can have your kids use something called loci. Do you know what loci is? I don't. Okay. So loci, um, we, the word location, you can kind of hear the, you know, the, 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 etymology there. Um, I'm not sure how it exactly got to location, but basically loci is all about making locations in your brain and filling them with valid information that you want to remember. Okay. okay. So like if you, if you kind of close your eyes and you imagine your house, right? Mm-hmm. So go ahead and close your eyes. Okay. Imagine your house. All right. Now you're, we're going to be learning Genesis 1, 1. Okay. You're walking into your house. I want you to imagine, do you remember that big room that you have there, that kind of living room area, mm-hmm. you have the, the TV there, right? There's a baseball game in the big inning. Okay. See what I did there. Right. But it's kind of a crazy idea. You're, you're going to see the baseball game on the television and you're going to say, okay, in the big inning, right? Do you see that? Okay. Mm-hmm. Now we're going to say, God, I want, I want to have, I want to put a Bible just on maybe on a, on a little table or something right beside that. Okay. Just do that in your mind. Okay. Mm-hmm. So in the beginning, God, and then, uh, right beside the Bible on that same table, put a lump of Plato, Plato. All right. Mm-hmm. Created. All right, so let's go through it again. You see those three things. You see the TV, the Bible, and the Plato. In the beginning, God created. We could do that for the whole verse. Okay, mm-hmm. you, you, that, that, that's all I'm going to do for now. But I mean, that's, that's, that's low side. Okay, so okay. we're actually like giving a location that you can actually see in your head. Mm-hmm. And we can actually do that in diff- multiple rooms. In fact, yeah. it's better if you actually do multiple rooms. Okay. And it's better if you make the image be like kind of as crazy as possible. Okay. Because, uh, because that will actually increase the, the memory capacity. It's, it's, it's kind of intense, right? It increases the intensity of that. That is how. We, I, I don't know. I think it was on the, maybe Monday's episode. We talked about moonwalking with Einstein. Yeah. Okay. That's how that guy was able to memorize all those cards in 90 seconds. He used loci. Wow. Okay. okay. And he was able to use some certain things that he was doing. I, I don't know what his images he was using were. Yeah. Whatever he was doing, but he got real darn good at it. Yeah. There are people who build whole cities in their heads. Wow. No joke. And they do it through loci and they can memorize information. You give that to a middle schooler or a high schooler. Mm-hmm. There is nothing little kid about that. Yeah. Right. And it is powerful. Mm-hmm. And if you try it, if you try it at home, try, try memorizing something using loci, you know, go through your room and fit little different images that, that relate to whatever you're mm-hmm. trying to memorize. And you'll see how powerful and how easy it mm-hmm. is to get those and then come back like a week later. Yeah. And you'll get maybe not all the information, but a lot of it. And so if you walk through your house, that little, you know, that house or whatever you're yeah. doing several times, you'll, you'll see how you can get better at this. Mm-hmm loci is a powerful way to bring older kids into memorization. Yeah. Wow. That's super interesting. Let's take a break. We'll be right back. What we do at IEW is break through the, the noise of the grammar and the writing prompts. And we say, this is what you do step by step. And I've witnessed it over and over again, both watching Andrew teach and hearing from parents. This is the best writing program. We've made it so easy and made it really affordable. So any mom can teach writing to their children using our course, and we guarantee it. To try three weeks of free lessons, visit IEW.com. We are back with Nathan. Um, So I wanna talk really quickly, but before we close, we have a few minutes left. What comes after memorization? Cause like, is memorization just the whole point? Like, I mean, what, what benefit is it to just memorize a bunch of stuff? Right, right. You know, how does that benefit us as people? I mean, obviously God's word. And we did talk about this in episode For one sure. and how we have to have that foundation. But I'm thinking beyond God's word, thinking about, you know, like historical dates and multiplication tables. and I mean, all the other random things that we memorize. What then? Like what comes after that? Right. I, I think actually a really good um, kind of metaphor, not metaphor, but like an image for this is actually God's word. Because there, there are people in this world who know way more about the Bible than I do, right? They have yeah, more of right. it memorized, but if they're not applying it, yeah. they're not doing it, what good does that amazing weapon that they have in their brain right. do for them, right? Yeah. If you had the whole Bible and you never use it, right? what good is it? So memorization on its own, there is actually psychosomatic benefits, mm-hmm. uh, you know, in terms of like keeping your, your, your brain fresh for long periods of time, like an old yeah. age and that kind of stuff. And there's a lot of stuff that goes into that, that there is benefit just to memorizing. Right. Um, but that's not why we do it. We do it because we're going to then use it. Mm-hmm. Right. And so really what happens after that, what ought to happen is once you memorize stuff, 
you, you, you want to then talk about that stuff. Mm -hmm. How does it relate together? You know, what, what, you know, how does this relate to that? If you're trying to be a mechanic mm -hmm. in an auto, you know, an auto mechanic, right. And you're, you're like, Hey, you know, give me the doohickey. You can say that about a wrench, right? But it's not very precise, right? Your precision right. of language is not very good. And a torque wrench is very different than, you know, a crescent wrench. I mean, and they do very different things. And so you, you need to understand what the application is and what, you know, how to use them. Right. These kinds of conversations have to take place. Yes. You do need to know what they're called first though. Right. You, mm -hmm. need to do, you need to do that. But then you need to start not only talking about it, but then using those things and practicing with those things. Mm -hmm. And so kind of, you know, what I what I, I typically say about this is that you want to have conversations about the stuff. OK. okay? Yeah. Um, and when it comes to God's word, I'm going to be reading God's word. I'm, you know, that, that's related to the things I've memorized. Right. You know, that kind like of thing. you had talked about Galatians earlier. Yep, exactly. Yeah. yeah. And so then I'm going to then I want to talk about that. I'm going right. to say, you know, how does this relate back, you know, specifically to Christ? How does it relate to these things that we've memorized? Right. You know, and how does it memorize these other passages we've memorized? So I'm going to talk about all those things to bring together all mm -hmm. that that information rightly mm -hmm. right so that's that's that comprehension or understanding otherwise known as a dialectic phase right once you under once you have once you have knowledge and understanding then i want to use it mm -hmm. right not only do i want to, to persuade others of it right right of the, of the rightness of, of god's word um but i want to be to apply it rightly mm -hmm. right um there's a whole lot of um, people in this world that have a lot of understanding and a lot of knowledge that aren't using it rightly right right and so for that reason i would recommend that that someone mentor mm -hmm. those older students. You, we don't stop just because kids get older, right. right? Just because a high schooler reaches high school does not mean that like now they're all doing their own, you know, um, learning. Yeah. A lot of this stuff can be self-driven, which is very nice. Yeah. Right. But they still need the mentor. They still need you. Mm -hmm. And, and to some degree, you know, me as a, as a 40, what, three year old man, I still sometimes need my dad, you know? Yeah. I mean, I mean like there, there's still the mentorship that takes place there. Maybe it's not as sure. often, Sure. Right. Um, but it, but it's still there. And, and my dad is still alive. So I, I have that benefit. Yeah. You know, yeah. So. That's awesome. So let's wrap it all up. Sure. Um, what are, just, just pull all of this together and what are your final thoughts? So, um, I actually have a verse here I wrote down and, and that is, um, Proverbs one seven says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Fools despise wisdom and instruction. And, and, you know, memorization, I am a big fan. I, mm -hmm. I, I love memorization, not only because of, you know, uh, I, I love learning about how to do it and, and, and doing it better and, and helping other people to do it. And, and mm -hmm. I have a tremendous amount of fun doing that. Yeah. And I see the benefits. Um, but at the end of the day, it, the actually the heart of the person, you mm -hmm. know, towards God and specifically yeah. towards Christ is really what we, we really ought to be, you know, that's yeah. the most important. Right. right? Um, so even though I would advocate memorization, it actually isn't the foundation. Right. The fear of the Lord is the foundation. Amen. Um, Interestingly, we can't change people's hearts. Yeah. God can. Okay. So, so just because you have your child memorize the whole Bible mm -hmm. doesn't mean that they are going to choose Christ. Right. It, it, it doesn't mean that. Yeah. I, I would hope so. Right. You're definitely making it easier for them to choose right. Christ. You know, you're, you're giving the context that God has, he says, you know, teach your children and all this yeah. kind of stuff. And so you, you got the right context. Um, but the foundation of a mm -hmm. person as, as, as in their character and their spirit mm -hmm. is the fear of the Lord. Um, and so um, that's, I guess, just kind of like a, a good good clincher to that is just yeah. to remember that even though memorization is highly, highly effective, right. Um, it is not the answer. Jesus is the answer. Yeah. 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 But I will say Psalm 1, 1911 says this, uh, thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Okay. So this is the side where it's, you know, it has to be God that, that, that ultimately, you know, works yeah. in a person, but, but, um, there's also the side where, you know what, I'm going to give you every tool you possibly can to fight sin. Yeah. And if you don't know God's commands, it's hard to follow them. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So let's like yeah. learn them. Yeah. And so, um, so yeah. there's, there's kind of two sides to that conversation as well. Yeah. Yeah. That's so great. I, I, what I am so excited about is the idea of memorization, setting that foundation for our kids, them memorizing God's word so that they won't sin against God. I mean, they're going to sin because they're sinful. <laughs> we're going to sin because we're sinful. But when we know God's truth, when you, we know his commandments, We'll think twice maybe before, mm. you know, sinning and living a life of sin. Um, however, I don't want moms to think like, oh, I'm messing it up if I'm sure. not memorizing something. And so I really appreciate you saying, you know, like the fear of the Lord, that, that that's it. It's all about Jesus and learning about him and pointing our kids to Christ. And this is one of the ways we do that. You know, our family, we do our morning basket time. And that's when we do, you know, a lot of our Bible reading, Bible studies, you know, we, we sometimes memorize, you know, other things. Um, but I, I love being able to just pour scripture over my kids. I mean, yeah. it's, it is one of the, uh, it is the most important part of our homeschool day. And if that's all we ever get to, that's great. Um, 
but you know, praise God that he's given us our word and his, not our word. It's not our word, his no, word, his word, yeah, that's right. <laughs> his word and the ability to memorize it yeah. so that we can recall it when we need to. So really quickly, I know they, they've heard that uh, about Bible quest through this week. Tell us really quickly in a nutshell, again, um, where, what Bible quest is and where they can find out more information about it. Sure. So Bible Quest is, um, we basically make easy and effective tools mm -hmm. to help you to teach God's word. Amen. That's what we do. Yeah. Um, and we do it, we do it with a very specific model in mind. Um, basically what we do is we memorize stuff. We talk about and practice with that stuff. Yeah. And then we uh, want to share that stuff and apply that stuff that we learn about and in God's word. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's what we do. Um, BibleQuestClassical.com forward slash rocked r-o-c-k-e-d if you go there you can get um four free weeks and um, we have songs there and and we have um some tools that you can use and and kind of check it out and yeah. see if that's something that would be a benefit to you yeah it is such a great resource i love that you guys have put all of the work into doing this because it's, it's a lot and you love games and, I, and games and we love it. games Absolutely. and there's games in it so yeah. so this is a great way for you guys to help your kids memorize god's word it's the most important thing Thank you so much for being with us this week, Nathan. It's yeah, been absolutely. so much fun talking. I know that like there's so many more things that we could talk about in the world of memorization, um, but we'll have you come back again in the future and we can maybe talk more about memorization or God's word or who knows something absolutely. else because there's always something exciting to talk about. So thank you guys so much for listening. If this podcast and the Schoolhouse Rocked ministry is a blessing to you, would you consider supporting us financially? Go to Schoolhouse Rocked dot com click on the donate button you can make a one-time donation you can donate monthly um but we love doing what we do and we want to continue doing what we do with the podcast um so if you would consider that prayerfully we would really appreciate that thank you so much for being with us this week we will be back with you on monday with another fantastic guest have a great week bye i want them to know that i loved them that's the first thing i want i want i don't want them to look back on their years at home and wonder if I love them. I want them to know that I love them. The second thing is that I want them to know that I trusted the Lord, that I trusted God for every decision that I make. And when I make a wrong decision, which we do as parents, and when the day goes bad, and when we burn the dinner, and when we stub our toe, and when our kids push us to the end of what we think we can do, and we say the word that we never thought we'd hear come out of our mouth, or we make a wrong decision, we have an opportunity to go back and make it right. And so it doesn't mean that we had perfect days, you know, and I've been homeschooling for 22 years. The laundry has never folded itself. The kids have never come down in the morning and said, oh, mom, you were so happy to see you. We got up early, did some prepositions, did a little math, thought that would bless you. That never happens, right? But what has happened is over the years, through even the hard days and even the days when I thought I can't do this for one more minute, we have been solidifying relationships with our kids. I feel like we have a rich life. We're rich. Amen. We have a depth in our relationship that nothing can take away. We'll have it for the rest of our days.